Welcome to the Thinking Practitioner Podcast, a podcast where we dig into the fascinating issues, conditions, and quandaries in the massage and manual therapy world today. I'm Whitney Lowe. And I'm Till Luca. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Thinking, Thinking Practitioner. Practitioner. The Thinking Practitioner Podcast is supported by ABMP Associated Bodywork and Massage Professionals. ABMP membership gives professional practitioners like you a package including individual liability insurance, free continuing education and quick reference apps, online scheduling and payments with Pocket Suite, and much more. And ABMP CE courses, podcasts, and massage and bodywork magazine always feature expert voices and new perspectives in the profession, including from Till and myself. Thinking practitioner listeners can save on joining ABMP at abmp.com forward slash thinking. Till, how are you today? I am good, and I am excited to be here with you and with our guest, Gil Headley. How are you, Gil? I'm good. I'm I'm uh I'm right here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> That's a good place to be. We get to spend a little time with you, just catching up, which I always enjoy. And we're going to ask you about what you've been up to, including your nerve tour. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Whitney? Yes, indeed. That's what's on the plan. So uh, Gil is doing, for those people who don't know, a, I think, horrendously ambitious project here going around uh, to, I believe it was 111 cities. Is that correct, Gil? That is correct. <laughs> yeah. So um, I want to, we'll ask a few questions later on, but I'm like, there's one question I want to kind of find out, like, what in the world got into your mind about doing this? Oh. For those of us who spend a lot of time on the road, you know, that's, uh, I just, that seems like a very... Uh, uh, ambitious undertaking. I think. Uh, I actually understand why you wanted to do more than eleven, and two hundred and twenty-two was just way too many. So <laughs> somewhere in there, you got to get to that nice round number. I like that. <laughs> That's it. Okay, Gil, we should introduce you a little bit to our practitioners who may not know who you are. Okay, I don't even know how to do that, honestly. Except I know that how you and I met was uh, in the 90s when you came to the Rolf Institute. 1991. For... A fine 1991. year, a fine year mm -hmm. for making yeah. friends. That was a good year for making friends. That was like my second or third full year at the Rolf Institute teaching there. And you came in and made an impression, a very positive impression on me. And that class you were in was a pretty special class. Tom Myers was the lead teacher. Yeah. And I'm still in touch with some of those people. What what do you how do you introduce yourself? How do you tell people about you and what you do? Well, um, I I'm an anatomy guy, <laughs> Good. Yeah. and and but I'm a whole person guy. So I'm an integral anatomy guy, and I I trained in theological ethics uh, as an academic, and saw something was missing there mainly a connection to my body, <laughs> despite mm -hmm. the fact that I was talking about it a lot and pontificating with everyone else in the ethics department about the body, and none of us were even in one. And so I had to launch into another another phase of my development as an ethicist, and that's my development as a body worker. So I went and got you know, trained in massage at, at the Rolf Institute with you and Tom there, and then, and then trained as a rolfer, and and then I was like, hey, I got to know more. I, I don't know enough anatomy to be doing what I'm doing. So I thought, let me go to the lab and and see what I can figure out. And that that was the beginning of um, 30 years in the lab. <laughs> and, uh, I just did rolfing for a few years, uh, I, and uh, but I became possessed. By the anatomy, uh, and, and you really, you really took the vision that we were learning and exploring there at the Rolf Institute of wholeness, and a at that time very fascial based picture of the body, but really as a medium for understanding the wholeness of the body and the interconnectedness of the body, yeah. and made it into an art form. You've really done that. Oh well, thank you. Uh, and I can say with you that that was the launch point because I was I'm a very much of a doubting Thomas, and we're all talking about these different layers in the in the at the institute, and I'm like, well, I'll bet they're there, but I gotta see them, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. So so I gotta I, I need to look under the skin, and that that really helped and I invited many rolfers into the lab to join me there and and then I ran out of rolfers so I had to go to massage therapists and, and then then I 
couldn't afford to advertise in the massage magazines anymore. So I was like, well, let me let me just uh, let them tell people about it. And now I have folks from every conceivable um, modality who come, you know, the fitness world and the, the Pilates and the yoga people. And, and now I have the naturopaths and the osteopaths and the PTs and the chiropractors and everybody uh, wants to come and learn this way. When you've had me in as a guest for your Live with Gil series where you Get, we get to talk to you. You show us some pictures or expound and we get the dialogue on that. I was amazed at how diverse your community is. You got one, it's pretty large. You got a lot of people that show up live on a Sunday or whatever it is for these <laughs> events. And then they're they're from all over the world and all over the spectrum. It is professionally a, as well. A huge and very endearing community. I, I don't have a huge tolerance for meanness. And so so folks show up pretty friendly to my community. I was the friendliest guy in my high school. I got voted that. So I gotta gotta keep it. In, in my community. So yeah, we're, we're a pretty nice bunch. <laughs> uh. So tell us a little bit, um, you know, you're embark, you have embarked on this nerve tour now for those people who don't know what this really is. Tell us what is the nerve, nerve tour and what is it about? Well, uh, you can look at it at two levels. We're touring mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're talking about the nerves. And, and so I'm touring the people who attend through the human nervous tissues with ex examples from the laboratory uh and then we're literally touring around <laughs> the whole country in an rv uh mm -hmm. the whole continent really so just to be clear you're showing you're showing pictures of dissections you're not diving into people you're diving into people's nervous system through your words and pictures and that is my presence. intention exactly that's right to engage yes. the nervous system when people come up to me at the end and they're their eyes are watering and they want to give me a big hug. I'm like, yay, we got into your autonomics. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> got there. So, so yeah, the hope is, is to help people to engage uh, their nervous system uh, or at least to have tools in which they might do so after the fact and, and then be able to have a meaningful relationship with the nervous tissues, nerve tree of their clients as well. Right. So, but I think it kind of always starts at home. You know, mm -hmm. if you can have, personal relationship, then you can extend that to facilitate other people in having a personal relationship. It's all just academic or in your head. It's not going to come across quite the same way. So yeah, I do try and engage people at, at multiple levels in the talk. In five hours, I can do a lot, really. Um, and it goes by pretty quickly. So folks tell me, I don't have a whole lot of thumb twiddlers in the crowd <laughs> occasional dozing you know but, but that's to be expected when you turn the lights down and you don't know how late someone stayed up and so <laughs> uh, i would have to say and again i got to see this i was fortunate enough to see you back in in november um the the crowd was pretty riveted um even you know i was talking with people and it breaks and things like that and i was um very, you know, blown away by how engaging that whole time was. Five hours can be a long time to listen to a lecture. But one of the things that, you know, you do so exceptionally well that makes makes a presentation engaging is the element of story that mm. keeps people following along with, with what's really happening throughout here. And that's just, um, it was, I have to say, just marvelously done. Really, really well done. Thank you. And I do, um, I do also hope that even for those who might forget the stories uh, which i hope they they remember them but but also um the visuals are strong in a way that makes a impression i like to say no need to take notes here because we're going to burn this into your gyre and you're not going to be able to stop seeing it even when you go home <laughs> you're going to keep watching this presentation for weeks inside your head as you replay certain images that make a powerful impact and and that's kind of the, my intention you know is to create images that are not not in a traumatic way, of course, but in a in a in a exciting way. That yeah. it's like, wow! Well, I saw the Grand Canyon. I can close my eyes. I can still see the Grand Canyon, and it's kind of like that. I'm showing pictures of the Grand Canyon, but it's inside of us. Yeah, that's uh, you. You were kind enough to invite me and Loretta, my wife, down, and we got front row seats because Loretta had fairly recently been through brain surgery. Mm. and for our vision problems. Mm -hmm. And she was, of course, fascinated with the subject matter. You were talking about the nerves and you began your lecture with the talking about the cranial nerves. Mm -hmm. And uh, she didn't 
want to leave. It was her first long outing from the house after brain mm. surgery for you know, a few months later. And she was, I guess this is a testament to the riveting nature of what you're, <laughs> your presence, but also what you're showing. She was just fascinated. We didn't realize it was five hours long or we would have planned to stay longer. Although I don't think she maybe would have made it five hours, but she was not ready to leave after the hour and a half we were uh -huh. to stay. Mm -hmm. I got to say, she really <laughs> was struck and uh, wanted more. Mm -hmm. So you did that. You found a way to inspire her and talk to her in her state and keep her engaged. Well, that makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. Great to be there with you. Uh -huh. And the, the images are striking. I mean, it's, I gotta, I'm holding myself back a little bit just because I'm, I'm not usually such a gushing fan <laughs> of my guests, but I'm gushing a little bit. Because it was, uh, you have some of the best pictures I've seen of cranial nerves. Mm. And you got to come, you came and showed Sue and I, Sue Hitzman and I, some of those as a little preview mm -hmm. that again, just dropped my jaw. And I, you know, I pieced these things together from various sources and and imaginings, you know, but to see the, your actual dissections of lifting the brain out of the cranial vault and to see the cranial nerves dangling down like spider legs or something was just really, that's one of the ones that's burned right into my head. Oh, good. Yeah, the, I do find that if you are left to your own devices, the, the nervous system will likely escape you uh, in mm. your anatomy studies because it's, mm. um, A, it's super complicated and it's hard enough just to engage it at a regional anatomy level you know, in terms of the vocabulary and the different, you know, branches that they create and who divides it this way and who divides it that way. So I do feel that, you know, showing people visuals that make it super clear and super obvious, like, that's always my goal in my presentations. It's like, I don't want to be telling more, you know, descriptive stories in the air. I just want to show it to you. It's like a baseball bat to the, you know, to the consciousness that says there, you know, and then you can, you can have a, I think it was so much easier to have a relationship with something you can see. Uh, I'm curious to hear picture. your, your take on this too, because you, you kind of alluded to this and it's certainly been my experience over the years in working with a lot of professionals and, you know, ma mostly manual therapy practitioners from different fields who all say the same thing, which is we didn't really study the nervous system in that great a detail in, in our training. Uh, do you have yeah. a clue? Like why? I mean, if it's so relevant and so important and pervasive, why? Why don't we get into there? Right all now? that time memorizing that crap about the <laughs> origins and insertions of every muscle for your test. And, and, yeah. and I think curriculum could be simplified with respect to the musculature a great deal mm -hmm. um, because that which is relevant to most touch practices does not include some fanciful schematizations that people are forced to memorize. And then that would open up all kinds of space in a curriculum. And look, mm -hmm. I'm uh, five hours. Can you open up five hours in your curriculum and watch this thing, yeah. right? And and it'll blow your mind and change your practice and transform your life potentially. We can make room for that. It, it doesn't have to be forever. It's not like we got to do a month neuro course in the middle of a massage training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Five hours and cover a shit ton <laughs> of 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 uh, of stuff. Yeah, you know. And so, so I I think it's yeah. I think it's a question of. Uh, emphasis in the curriculum, what they think you need to know. And the fact of the matter is everybody who's touching a body is traipsing all over the nerve tissues. You just don't know it. So that's right. Yeah. You're outside of scope of practice. Like I remember years ago, I made my third DVD in my DVD series and uh, integral anatomy series. And it was something blah, blah, blah. And the word viscera was in there. And people who had been a company who had been purchasing my, my DVDs, I said, I got another one for you. And they're like, oh, viscera that's out of our scope of practice i'm like are you kidding me you are confused you are 
You are meddling with viscera from the moment you say hi and and I like your your outfit to somebody. You're you're meddling with their with their viscera. Their face flushes at the compliment, right? That's that's your heart in your face. So don't think you're not touching it when you're touching a human being. And same goes for the nerve tissues. It's not like uh, it's like oh that's for chiropractors or something or, or medical doctors. No, you're traipsing all over the nervous system all day long, and you just don't know it. So I'm just here trying to overcome ignorance a little bit and mm -hmm. say, wouldn't you like to know what you're doing to a person's tissues? Or I was so, you know, as a practitioner going into the lab early on, still a practitioner trying to facilitate my practice. I, when I saw, oh my gosh, look at all that stuff there. Well, that gave me a little more respect at the end of my elbow for what I was doing there. Yeah. And also I found, oh, and this area here, hmm, this is interesting too, but it's not quite rigged the same way. So maybe I can actually work, you know, in a way and engage that area without fear, because also I know that. I know that it's not so complicated there and I can do these things that I'm doing. And then other places where it's like, back off, dude, you have no idea what well, you're literally in a minefield and you're and you're doing a jig. So <laughs> that's a great no, that's a great uh, example of how this kind of information could be really practical and useful to a hands-on practitioner. What's what's different about nervous tissue? Because you're you're working with tissues in dissection. Yeah. You're having influence. This is all down the stream as you're describing it. Mm -hmm. But there's something different, I imagine, about actually dissecting for nerves and maybe for doing body work when you're thinking about nerves. How would you characterize that for us? Well, it is very di different to dissect for nerves. And that's why I put it off for 30 years <laughs> because I was busy doing something else. I was busy dissecting for layers and, when, and dissecting for textural biological fabrics and their continuities, which whose, whose integrity comes from the nerve tissues in, in large measure. And so- What? Wait a minute. Say a little more about that. The integrity of the layers comes from the nerve tissues. Did I get you right? You got me exactly right. So- okay. The, the nerve tree, if you use that image, has its you know central axis, its trunk, and then its peripheral branches, right? So those peripheral branches don't simply make a beeline from the trunk to the most distal right. surface. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. it, they each time they kind of poke through to a new fabric, they infiltrate it. Uh, all the layers are innervated, right? So, so they infiltrate those layers and that's the stringy material. The nerve, I didn't show you guys a single neuron in, in the mm -hmm. nerve tour. I showed you fascial wrapped neurons. Mm -hmm. I showed you a fascia tree that had neurons in it. That's all I can do, except from a, a microscopic perspective. But from a gross perspective, we're looking at uh, a nerve tree that's wrapped in fibrous connective tissue and that fibrous connective tissue is infiltrating all of those layers. And so it gives it tensile strength. Um, and, and that's kind of interesting <laughs> all on its own. And also you can be kind of short in your nervous, in your nerve tree. You could kind of have a hypertonic tree and that's gonna change the texture of the tissues that you're touching. And most of the people I, I teach are texture people. They may mm. not describe themselves that way, but you know, they put their hands on a person. Some of it feels soft. Some of it feels like a ball or a rock or something. And they go to that one. And then the person says, you're a genius. How did you find my problem? And it's like, well, I'm just swimming in an ocean here and ran into a rock. How could I miss it? You know, <laughs> so that's texture people, right? So mm -hmm. so then what about what about the texture of, of the nerve tissues in there? Can you, is it, can you get, you're saying to settle down, you're touch enough that you that while swimming in that ocean, you can feel, um, you know, ropes going up to buoys. You know, can you? You know, you might be able to get it. And and I actually in the talk lead people in some palpation and, and uh, uh, when I'm doing the brachial plexus uh, 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 terminal branches for fun, I, I have people palpate a couple things, and we all joke about it because when you're thunking on your big nerves, you can really really feel it. And, uh, but it's like, you ought to know that then. You ought to know that even if, no, we don't have to talk about the finest branches. What about the big chunky ones? Do you know those and can you feel them? Well, it's super easy. I can teach my mother to do that. 
I train, I do a little bit of nerve palpation in my hands-on trainings. And that is, the point I make is that most, say, massage people or structural integrators instinctually avoid the nerves. Mm. We mm -hmm. learn to not work on them because they feel different and we think our target is something else. Mm. So to do that figure ground switch is also pretty revealing. And there is the surprising chunkiness or largeness or yeah. tangibility to some of those nerve tracks. Yeah, and too. some leverage too. Yeah, uh, leverage, like you can get a hold of it and do something with it, you're saying, or what? Yeah, I mean, a, a, either either in a specific trunk or a broad broad palm to the surface, if you bring your intention to the, to the nerve tree and realize, oh, wow, I'm actually, I'm putting drag, I'm putting drag on the, on the cutaneous nerves, you know, and, and they go back to your spinal cord, you know, so you can, you can talk to the, the nerve tree with, with a, uh, different techniques. I mean, I'm not a technique guy. I leave that to you. And I brag about you at every talk till I have your, oh, your little go up there. And I'm like, this is your technique guy. You know, because, mm -hmm. because, uh, well, someone's got to know to do that. And I don't, you know, but I, I can see the, I can see the roads, you know, I can see the pathways to technique, although I don't teach technique. Um, I'll leave that to. Well, them. you inspire technique through, again, which the, the tour you give us, of these tissues and the qualities you describe and your embodied uh, excitement about them as well. <laughs> that is that is my hope. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to know, you know, this is a wonderful experience for those of us in the audience seeing this stuff, but also a little bit from your perspective, like ha what have been some of the most interesting things that you have learned either out of the project that led to the tour or the from the, the tour experience of sharing this stuff as well? Mm -hmm. Well, in the project, First thing I had to do was do everything different than what I've always done. I had to put my scalpel down, which is really hard for a guy who's, you know, been on demand lecturing and scalpeling at the same time for 30 years. Right. I had to put that scalpel down and get a paddle because the only way to preserve the branches of that tree is with like a little tiny metal spatula and you just kind of paddle along and paddle along because if you cut, you've destroyed the nerves. That's it. Mm -hmm. You bring out the knife, the nerve is gone. You ruined it. Go get your bottle of glue. Uh, so, so that was interesting just as a technique shift for a person who's an artist, but I'm a sculptor. And so I had to like use a different tool to sculpt with. And that was very challenging. But then also the incredible rigorous study that we had to do to comprehend what was in front of our face. Mm -hmm. So I had with me the entire project uh, a multiplicity of research helpers. Um, I had some dissection help, a little bit of dissection help, for which I'm very grateful on the part of my friends who could step up to that and and uh, and do some dissection help. But it was not something I really risk when it comes to doing the kind of dissections that you saw up on that screen. Um, I'm not going to blame anyone else but me <laughs> if it doesn't turn out. And so uh, so te technique, but research. So because it turns out that no matter how many books you have out on the table, just the more you have, the more they disagree. Right. And, <laughs> and you're thinking this is just this is just common knowledge, right? Well, mm -hmm. well it's actually it's actually kind of all very fluid, and 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 the information is varied. And what I realized was that whatever, even say you learn nothing about the nervous system at all, that's probably the case. Say you learn something about it, well, that's probably wrong. And say you learned a little bit more about it, well, now you're confidently wrong. And so you know, you you get some ego for your book knowledge. But when you actually go into the tissues, it's like, oh, they don't give a hoot about your schematizations. They're just going to re-anastomose and join up and take a left turn. And they'll just do whatever they damn well please because they don't care about your books, your academics, or your, or your different offices and different departments at your university. They're just this big old jellyfish in there growing tentacles anywhere it damn well pleases and, and, and having a good time at it. You know? mm -hmm. And that's, so, so when you go to the, what I call, you know, tracking them in the wild, you know, which is, you know, really what you're doing when you're doing dissection. And it's, it's a confrontation with your mind, you know, because you show up with a mind state and a mind frame around the nerve tissues, around what you're looking for, around the vagus nerve, around whatever you have a name for from a book. And then you're confronted with this stuff in front of you that just doesn't match so well and doesn't fit in any boxes and 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 
pulls at the rein so much that it breaks free and just does its thing. And then what is your mind to do <laughs> on the far side of an experience like that? And it really was a it was it was a juxtaposition of regional anatomy and integral anatomy, right? With regional anatomy having its propensity, its very left brain strategy of one to one mapping of a name to a structure and in a space in a place, and that's that's it. That becomes a, a, a way of telling the story of anatomy. And integral anatomy is a very right brained <laughs> process about you know relationships and context and individuality. And so what the whole project was, was a battle <laughs> between needing to use the tools of regional anatomy, because that's where people have set descriptions down about these tissues, and trying to see it for what it is. And that was like <laughs> literally messing with my head the entire project. And I hope that that's what I do in the tour talk as well, is to help to convey that, that this way of knowing you know, that that with which we've conventionally approached the nervous tissues doesn't have to be the only way that we take it in. We can take it in as a whole. We can take it in as a relationship. We can take it in in its context in relationship with other tissues or in a relationship with our behavior as our with our personhood. And aesthetically, because so much of what you're doing is just the visual aesthetics of what we're seeing. So the, the analytical memorizing of names is a little like the lover of nature who goes and studies botany and goes, wait a minute, this is like a lot of categorization. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're getting right down to the flower yeah. in a way. And in another way too, it's it's telling us we should really be looking at a lot of our reference tools as tendencies to exist instead of factual information. Like, you know, when we see, you know, this is where the path of the ulnar nerve is here. It's like, well, this is actually where it has a tendency to exist more often than not. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a high probability for certain yeah. things. Now, very yeah. high probability, but when you get down to the minutia, it becomes very unique. And, and I think that uniqueness is, is the starting point, you know, mm -hmm. for, for integral anatomy, the witnessing of the individual in their uniqueness, which I think is the only way to do body work as well. Because yeah. if you're working on an idea, you're not working on a person in front of you, you know, and it's it's not different for surgeons either. I mean, the surgeons, I think, are more than most people in the medical professions keenly aware of everyone's uniqueness. Uh, because they go in just like I do. They're dissecting human bodies and finding out, oh, it didn't go that way this time. Well, I was going to say, like, uh, you've alluded to this a couple of times, but, you know, mainly we're often really interested here on our podcast of trying to make some direct connections with people's clinical practice. And I'm, I'm curious to hear what you think are some of the most valuable and important takeaways to connect what you've learned and what you share there with, with what happens in treatment rooms individually with people. Hmm. Well, I guess in a treatment room, you know, if we add a consciousness of this layer, say, of, of being uh, beyond muscles and fascia, or to understand that muscles and fascia are, are, the, uh, are infiltrated mm -hmm. in, yeah. in, the, in the highest degree by these nerve tissues, then we can maybe um, help that. Maybe we can facilitate that. Maybe we can realize that this person here, you can have a reset through touch of the nervous system, through touch, through conversation, through, through relationship. You can have a reset of the nervous system, the impact of which is so profound and transformative that may be your greatest service as opposed to releasing a knot. The knot mm -hmm. is the expression of, of a nervous system. Um, the the fascia are sensory, our sensory return apparatus. They're not packing material. They're you know they're communicative on their own in their own right, and they're also a sensory return pathway. Did people think about that? No, people think some people fascia is dead. It's a nerd. It's packing material. Whatever they think fascia is. It's like, well, if you're into fascia, you ought to get into nerve tissues and understand that, that those fascia are sensory nerve pathways. So you maybe understand pain a whole lot better when you realize that. Uh, that. 
And so, and then what kind of, how do you touch when you know that? Like what kind of sensory information do you want to send down that fascial pathway to the central nervous system to be integrated as an interpretation of the universe, as an interpretation of the world? What kind of information do you want to send? Do you want to send like bully on a playground? Do you want to send like loving, mm -hmm. loving kindness and pleasure? Like how are you going to talk to those sensory nerve endings in, in those fascia? You know, maybe you'll adjust it once you realize they're sensory. You're inspiring a different sense of how we do our work by the paradoxically by featuring so much of the what we work with, the materials, you're a materials guy, but in a way that really does inspire a different approach. I think this has been the biggest factor in the evolution of our field in the last 10, 20 years is a re-examination of how we do it and the explanations for that. Mm. And really, in many ways, de-emphasizing the, the physical specifics of what we're working with and re-valuing and re-assigning uh, importance to how we do it and what we're thinking about and the impact, the sensory information that you're producing as opposed to the thing you're producing the, the experience in, the experience and, itself becoming the focus. Yeah, and what's your state? When you enter in, what's your state when you enter into relationship with someone else's nervous system? Because if you're going to merge trees with somebody, you know, are you going to do it crazy? <laughs> are you going to do it kind? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, I we what you just said could be the wrap up to the episode, and maybe we should just like stop here almost. Mm -hmm. Except, I got to feature a little bit about the specifics of your project. Because I was fascinated by your um, the models, the the people you were working with, mm -hmm. and the, the how the unique circumstances of that. Mm. You want to say anything about that? Um, sure. So I work at this lab called the Institute for Anatomical Research in Colorado Springs, and it's a real personal place. <laughs> it's a very heart centered place. It's a small little non profit uh, lab and uh, founded by my friend, Bonnie Thompson. It's continued in, in its existence by my friend, uh, Jim Polciani. Uh, and it's a wonderful, sweet space. And we have our own little donor program and that enables us to, you know, know our donors. And donors are the people that you're dissecting. Yeah, the, yeah, the donor, I, yeah, so, so yeah, so people donate their bodies, they pass away, their families follow up, we receive those bodies, and and then we do our studies. And we're completely, you know, at the we are completely the beneficiaries of these of these donors and their gifts. And usually, you know, people think about it before you sign those donor forms, like, yeah, well, A, there's gonna come a time when I don't need this body. And and B. I, it wouldn't be cool if someone learned something from it. You know, so there's a certain kind of spirituality that underlies donating your body, I think. A certain uh, letting go. Um, took me 100 cadavers before I signed donor forms. Uh, I thought, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I was attached. I was like, like I, don't know, like, I don't know if I'm ready to give my body. But then after about 100, that was several hundred bodies ago. After about 100, I was like, yeah, yeah, I can I can definitely let this go at some point because this ain't me. You know, I, I'm not my body, um, although I, I do enjoy my body. And so the donor for the nerve project was a friend and uh, and the and the parent of a friend as well. So my friend Madhav, who spent at least lived with us for I don't know a year, worked for about six months on the on the A to Z project, filming for me, and then um, so I got to know his family, and they come and visit us while Madhav was living with us, and then uh, so his mom and dad would come and visit, and and they just fell in love with the lab too, and the work that we do there, and and we became fast friends, and and then uh, Jim uh, passed away. Uh, unexpectedly, and you know, he was a regular background person on the live with Gills. He's always in the background. He and his wife uh, Claudia, and they just loved it. And so, and I asked Claudia, "Well, what, do you, what, you know, I can, I can, we can use him for a class uh, for a week, or we can have him be a teacher for the lab for a few months, or 
I have this idea, you know, about the nerve project. She was like that, that he would love that. Now let's do that. And so it was very personal. <laughs> you know, I, the donor form was my friend and, and his son was on the camera. Uh, and, and that makes it actually really joyful, believe it or not, uh, mm -hmm. rather than weird or morose or something. It, it was, it was freeing actually to be. I don't think I got it that his son was on the camera. Yeah, I knew that you knew the donor and how, and I don't know for our listeners, just how unique that is in the dissection world. All, I mean, in my experience previously, the donors were carefully anonymous. You knew nothing about them. Yeah. In this case, you actually knew these people alive and people that were working with them. Knew them yeah. And we knew their life story. And, and, and I didn't have to wonder whether the family was okay with what I was doing because they were in the room. Grandma mm -hmm. flew in from Mexico and, and spent three days in a lab with me. Um, you know, so it was very, very personal that way, and 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 so we knew if something made us laugh, that Captain was laughing with us. You know, and mm -hmm. and uh, and if we were stuck and frustrated, we had his, you know, you know his mottos, you know, behind us. We had his picture on the wall. We knew we were backed mm -hmm. with, it. and and that brought actually a tremendous amount of kindness and joy to our project. It was it was an incredibly intimate, friendly, personal, loving process that uh, gave birth to this story of the nervous system uh, that I'm telling. And that does make a, it quite special. What a process for the for the family as well. Mm -hmm. the process of coming. Yeah, and they all came to the talk too in Boulder, uh, not in Boulder, Denver. Mm -hmm. uh, whole family showed up and uh, there was, there was, uh, yeah, mother-in-law, mother, two sons, cousin, um, were all at the talk, and then uh, his sister and nephew came to uh, a more recent uh, event, and it's really powerful to have, you know, because it's like how many people, a, get to see what folks learned mm -hmm. from their family members' gift and their gift. Right. Right. And also, um, yeah, the responsibility that that places on my shoulders, because believe me, I want to do, I have always wanted to do good by my donors. Yeah. I'm a donor family. We donated my uncle's body, my father's body. My mom will donate her body. I'll donate my body. And so, uh, you know, I'm a donor family. I know what it's like to be a donor family. And, and it's it's I think it's pretty it's pretty special to uh, to be able to be a part of it in that way, and they're they're thrilled, you know, the family is thrilled um, so much so that they awarded me one of his um, his uh, medals, you know, which just just sent me just melted me. Well, oh. that's great. Uh, you know, the reverence you bring, the respect, and the understanding of the context of what you're actually working with is something you've always played really strongly too. You really bring that, brought that forward. Mm -hmm. You had uh, a really unique pair of donors for your project too. That was striking. Oh, for a to, for the A to Z project? Yeah, maybe that was it. I just remember the differences between the two yeah. donors you were working with. Yeah. And the, yeah, I, I, again, again, I was in the A to Z project, which preceded the nerve project, where I compared two bodies, uh, it took 17 months to dissect two bodies on camera, bit by bit, everything you could possibly compare, I compared on, on these two forms. And when I saw, well, the one the one donor was a friend of the lab, again, uh, Jim was his massage therapist. Uh, so we he was known, you know, to to us and uh and he chose to go to Gill. I'm gonna go to Gill's table and you're gonna you're gonna work on me. Yeah. And that was made his life meaningful in the end because it's like you're dying before you expect to and you're feeling kind of young and did you do everything you wanted to do? And 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 then you're like, well, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna be an anatomy teacher. That'll be mm -hmm. cool. You know, and so I I made the best of that offering. And and yeah, it did make for a very powerful comparison with the other donor who was also a local person. I got to know her daughter and uh and dissected both of her parents' uh bodies. And and, and it, yeah, you 
it keeps you on your toes. You know, you always know what you're doing. I always have a shrine going. And I do that for everybody else too, by the way. It's not it's not just people I know, it's for total strangers because I know they're only total strangers to me. They're not total strangers to their family. So so we do take take good care of, of, of the dead. I would and also you're... say, you know, from listening to the entire presentation and watching all the way through that the fact that you knew a lot about his history um, and were, was able to show things throughout the presentation relevant to like, well, this, you know, likely here because of so-and-so that happened at this point long ago, that was incredibly helpful too, to, to be able to see that and, and have that relationship uh, illustrated there. Yeah, there'll be even more of that when I edit out the, the, the footage. I, I shot 97 days uh, on that project. And so I have quite an archive uh, that will be very exciting to edit out. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I'm too busy showing off these treats, these yeah. highlights. Right. That is that is unique to know something about the donor's physical or you know, a somatic experience too, and to be able to begin to correlate it or speculate about the correlations to what you're seeing in the lab. Because again, in the, the sections I've been a part of, we're guessing. We're finding things and says, well, well, I wonder if this person was experiencing X. And the, again, the more we learn about uh, pain, for instance, the less clear the relationship uh, is to structural issues. But yet for you to have be able to connect some of those dots, again, really unique. Well, context. sometimes the dots end up getting disconnected as well because the donor, right. yeah. here, here's what the doctor did to me, or the doctor says, here's what I did to the donor. And then you look and you're like, I don't know what he's talking about because this looks fine here. You know, so it's very interesting uh, in both directions, actually. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of that. I'm, I'm trying to follow. Um, well, Captain had had some, some uh, bowel surgeries uh, okay. for some problems and had had some d descriptions about the kind of the pathway of his colon and they mentioned what was taken out and such and such. And, and, uh, we looked in vain for what they were talking about. Uh, I'm kidding. And that was very interesting. It's like, what did they do? <laughs> because I'm not sure that's what they did, you know, hmm. that that kind of thing. And I found that to be the case over the years. Back in uh, another venue that I used to, to work at, we would get about uh, like a handwritten page from each of the donors. And often the donors, you know, uh, you're an old person and the doctor says something and that's what you think happened and you write it down and it's like a game of telephone. And by the time it gets onto that piece of paper, yeah, you know, like he took out my such and such. And I'm like, no, they did not take out your <laughs> such and such. They took out your other such and such, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but you don't know that until you get in there and and, and you compare. And that's why, frankly, the, the, the bottom line is what's in front of your face. Mm -hmm. Uh, no matter what the donor said about themselves, what the doctor said about the donor's body, what the medical records say, you know, the truth is lying there in front of your face <laughs> and, and you got to run with that. Mm -hmm. The 90 something hours, not something days of filming, five hours of presentation that, and you're still going to go back and work on the material. What do you envision for this project in the future? You're going to do a bunch more cities, and we want to hear about that too. But is this going to be something that's available to people in other forms someday? Yes, gonna... yes, absolutely. Ultimately, I did this project because having done the A to Z project, which was an incredibly comprehensive tour of the human body, and comparatively so, and from an integral perspective, directed towards body workers and, and hands-on therapists and fitness professionals, I was like, wait a second. I feel like I've shortchanged the the allopaths, naturopaths, osteopaths, and PTs because they're really into the nerves. So let me let me add that to this massive already 300 hour archive on my website. Now I'm going to add another 50 hours or something on the nerve tissues so that that becomes a lasting resource, not only for those other professions that I mentioned, but a resource with which our professions, the bodywork professions, can up their game with respect 
to the nerve tissues. So in anticipation, right, of, of and I was, I feel like I've helped the Pilates and yoga communities kind of up their anatomy game because when mm -hmm. they started coming to me, they're like, we didn't, we didn't really learn any of that stuff. So folks have been coming for three decades to my lab and then those are a prominent teacher. So they then go out and it's, it's kind of helped up the anatomy game in general of muscle, fascia, bone, right? But now, it's like, okay, now you got that down. Let's let's up the game one more time and add add a comprehensive relationship with the nerve tissues. And and so the the game the idea is to get all that onto my my subscriber site, which is whatever, 15 bucks a month. So you you can go pretty deep for 15 bucks. <laughs> Such a deal. 15 bucks a month. People get access to your library, they get access to your live conversations all kinds of things that come out of that yeah and all those ce's too so we'll, we'll ultimately you know rachel will coursify all of the content that i edit and my partner rachel and then it will be uh, it'll be courses you know courses on nerve tissues and i'll also probably be able to get a lymphatic course out of it as well because uh, as i mentioned in the talk the the nerve project quickly became the carefully dissect away the entire lymphatic <laughs> tissues project yeah. you know, to witness the nerves and so i got a lot of that on camera too just mm -hmm. uh, giving a better accounting of lymphatics than I've been able to in my in my other work. So with the this I want to say I mean you left me speechless there for a minute. As you were dissecting the nerve, you're saying you realized you had to carefully dissect away lymphatic tissue, and that gave you a different picture of that as well. Exactly, the material there. It was just constant, endless paddling through the lymphatics to get to the autonomics, especially which are just buried. Mm -hmm. uh, in, and Do you picture a lymphatic tour, a lymphatic project? I don't. I would have to do a more specific. In other words, I uh -huh. destroyed the lymphatics to witness the, to nerve see the nerves issues. Yeah. And while I was doing that, I made some careful dissections along the way, as well as some mistakes, misidentifications that I corrected months later. I was like, no, this wasn't that. This was this. And 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 so I don't know that I'll do a lymphatic tour, but I will definitely do presentations, you know, maybe online or or something on the lymphatics. There's lots of fans of the lymphatics out there who are asking me That's about true. it. And right. I'm happy to to bring that forward uh, as a kind of a perk uh, of of this of this project. Um, I don't know. I probably the ne if I'm going to do another tour, it might be Sex and the Sacred Heart. That might be where I, I, I take that. The anatomy of Sex and the Sacred Heart. Sex and the Sacred Heart. Yeah, amazing. Maybe well, I might have to call it pelvic anatomy to get it approved by NCTBM. What have right. you? But uh, <laughs> because if it has the word sex or penis in it, they're yeah. not. You know, they're going to be like, no, we don't do that. But I'm like, yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's one body, folks. You can only touch the whole person, and you are always engaging a person in their energy, in their being, in their heart. Well, you're always willing to think outside of our usual boxes and question the boxes themselves and look for larger connections, especially into that lived experience. Bust them boxes, are. baby. Bust them. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And again, I just I want to you know put in a plug for. Uh, anybody who has not seen this yet, take a look at where the uh, Nerve Tour is coming near your city. It is a fantastic presentation and something that will really dramatically um, impact you, I think. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want to say anything more about where you're going, how people should find out more, that kind of thing, Gil? Sure. We're sort of centrally based in Colorado, and so we're doing several more loops. So we just did our our, our Northwest uh, Pacific Northwest Loop. And now we're going to launch in just a week and a half uh, our our southeastern loop. So we're going to go through Texas and all down through the south, through the deep south, through uh, the southeast and come back through the, the south southern Midwest. And then we'll do a northeast loop and we'll we'll traipse back out over through the through the northeast, all through the Dakotas and, and Canada and come on down through the, the all those states up in the northeast and find our way back through the Midwest home. And then we'll finally launch back out to the to the west, go down the California coast and come back through Arizona and New Mexico. So we'll 
we're really going to cover a lot of towns. Yeah, and you got a lot of ground to cover there. That was our goal was was to be. I, wanna, I like to meet the people. Like you said, I got a lot of a lot of community out there. And I don't get that many chances to see folks unless they maybe come to a lab or something. So every now and then, I like to get out on the road and give give a hug and a hello and talk to people in person and be able to enjoy that. So yeah, we're going to be going all through. I mean, if you live somewhere, we're going there. <laughs> we are going there. Or within and two hours. Some of, of the I, some of the meetings are pretty intimate. You mentioned some that were you know as small as a dozen. You, others that are probably up into you know, over a hundred or more. Oh yeah, we had two hundred and twenty people in Portland. Yeah, uh, and then we had yeah. I don't know sixteen in Idaho Falls, and we had a wonderful time at both places. So I'm I'm more than happy to speak to a small group. Uh, awesome. Basically, if you can't get it up to seven, we're we're we we get we start thinking we might want to scratch that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hard to make that work, but otherwise you're pretty flexible. It sounds like. Yeah. Okay, so this these recordings last for a while. These podcasts, if it's the future, we're talking to the people in the future now, mm -hmm. and they've missed their chance, or they just can't make it to see you in person. How do people find out more? Well, you go to my website because in the future, it's all going to end up there eventually. Uh, but you might not want to wait. And I say, come out for the tour. It's going to take me a couple of years to edit all that stuff out, but it will eventually all end up on my website. I'll probably have it up there as a recording for sale for a while. You know that you can put into your library. And then ultimately, I'll probably add it to my add it to my membership. What's your website, Gil? Uh, GilHedley.com. G I L H E D L E Y. dot C O M. GilHedley.com. And there is a ton of stuff there, and I have a YouTube channel as well. So there's free stuff on my site. I have a, a Easy Rider membership, I call it, and you can join that, and you'll have up to. 30 hours, I think, of video content on the website, along with another 35 or so of audio content. So if you're just an easy rider, you can get 65 hours of kick-ass education there. But if you wanted to go for the deep dive and also get CEs, then folks join as an explorer. And then you can access all my writings as well as those live presentations that I do, as well as um, several hundred hours of CE content. You, you've done such an inspiring job of making your material available at all different levels and all different ways to engage too. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Accessibility is so important to me. Um, I'm trying to kind of democratize access to anatomical knowledge. And honestly, if you if you literally spend whatever, 10 hours a day for 30 days on my website, <laughs> you can you can change your perspective of the human body. You can practically do that in five hours on any of my talks, but um, but it, it is it is there to be accessible. Great. Wonderful. Like make sure those are in the show notes as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a delight talking with you, Gil. And uh, again, what, it's such an outstanding presentation. Thank you for all the work that you all put into doing the project and then coming out and sharing the sharing the findings with everybody here. I think it's going to be a, a great help to enrich you know, people's practice and, and some wonderful things you can learn about the nervous system. Thank you, Whitney. And thank you, Till. And uh, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm kind of compulsive and obsessed with these things, so you can't stop me. Yeah. Even whether we're having fun or not, I'm still going to do it. <laughs> All right. Good. <laughs> but we are having fun. So. Yeah. Glad to be able to have you come by. Glad to be able to go to your talk. Looking forward to more. Thank you, Gil. Yeah. And for everyone to remember, uh, Books of Discovery also is one of our sponsors. They've been a part of the massage and bodywork community for over 25 years. And nearly 3,000 schools around the globe teach with their textbooks, e-textbooks, and digital resources. Books of Discovery likes to say that learning adventures start here, and they find that same spirit here on the Thinking Practitioner podcast and are proud to support our work, knowing we share the mission to bring the massage and bodywork community thought-provoking, enlivening content that advances our profession. Instructors of manual therapy education programs can request complimentary copies of Books of Discovery's textbooks to review for use in their programs. Please reach out at booksofdiscovery.com. Listeners like you, instructor or not, can explore their collection of learning resources for anatomy, pathology, kinesiology, physiology, ethics, and business mastery at booksofdiscovery.com, where you, the thinking practitioner listener, can save 15% by entering thinking at checkout. And also, we'd like to say thank you to all of our listeners and to our sponsors. You can stop by our sites, 
For the video show notes, transcripts, and any extras, you can find that on my site over at the Academy of Clinical Massage.com. Until where can they find that for you? Advanced trainings.com. If you have comments, questions, or things you'd like to hear us talk about, just record a short memo on your phone and email it to us at info at thethinkingpractitioner.com. We might even play it on the air or look for us on social media. Where do people find you, Whitney? They can find me also on social under my name, Whitney Lowe. And you can, if you will, uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts. It does help people find the show. That's very helpful for everyone. And you can hear us on Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, or wherever else you happen to listen. And please do share the word, tell a friend, and we will look forward to seeing you in another interesting conversation. This is Till Lucas signing out. Pleasure to be with you, Whitney Lowe and Gil Headley. Thanks so much. Thanks again.